We've already looked a bit at the synth presets in Soundtrap, but you probably don't remember seeing oscillators in there anywhere, unless you did some extra exploring yourself. So first, I want to take everything down to the basics, so you can really see how the synth works. In Soundtrap, click on Add a new track, and then choose Synthesizer. Soundtrap will open up the last preset you used by default, so click on that, and then choose Synths, and then Read Me. Next, click on Effects, and delete the effects that are currently there, like this. Finally, click the Tweak button, which is actually how we get into the synth itself, and change the settings as seen on screen, highlighted in red. Pause the video now, and unpause it when you've finished setting up. So, let me explain to you what we've done. Over here on the left side of the synth, we have OSC1 and OSC2. As you've probably guessed, those OSCs are our oscillators. We've set the first one to be a simple sine wave, and we've turned the second one off, so that we can hear just the sound of one oscillator. All of the other settings are essentially to minimise the impact of the other components in the synthesizer, which I'll explain later. They're hardly affecting the sound at all right now. When I play on the keyboard, I hear a very pure flute-like sound. This is the sound of a sine wave, the waveform that we've been looking at in the diagrams I've shared with you since week one. Because it's such a smooth wave shape, there's not a lot of character to its sound, but it does make a mean bass. And you can change that character with effects, of course. Now have a go at changing the wave shape of OSC1 by clicking on the word sine so that it changes, though you may not want to worry about noise at the moment. So this way you'll be able to hear what the other wave shapes sound like. These are the basic oscillations that all synthesizers are built from. Let's pause the video so that you can do that. As you probably noticed, the triangle wave is also quite flute-like and open because of its similarity in the shape to the sine wave, but it's got a bit more character. The square wave is much more harsh and more string-like in quality, while the saw or sawtooth wave is also hard but more nasal. Let's turn on OSC2 and try listening to combinations of different waveforms. With two oscillators playing at once, I can create even more interesting sounds. The course button allows me to tune the oscillators. At the moment, OSC2 is playing 12 semitones higher than OSC1, an octave higher. If I drag that down to minus 12, this will give me its sound an octave lower. Once I've found a sound that I like, I can shape it with other parts of the synthesizer. There is a similarity with the process of adding effects to audio, as you've done before. I'm going to hold a note while I drag the cutoff down gradually. Because I've set this to a low pass filter, I can change the sound by gradually cutting out some of the higher harmonics. I'll drag the resolution down a little too, so it's not too extreme. Your turn. Turn on OSC2, experiment with combinations of the two oscillators and coarse tuning, and then mould the sound with the cutoff on the filter. The amplifier envelope allows us to change the way that each note is played. For example, turning the attack up will slow the onset of the note, so that it has a gradual beginning. Conversely, lengthening the release will allow the note to slowly fade away after I stop playing it on the keyboard. 